Hey, so yeah, surprise video today. So we're in the middle of the year, so I thought I'd do a little wrap up of the last, of all the books, not all the books, let's say my top 10 or 11, how many are in this list? One, two, stack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Well, like the nostalgia crit critic, I go one step beyond. Any anyway, my top 11 books of the last six months. Now, obviously, the next six months, this could all change. That's how it stands. What Willow Says by Lynn Buckle. This is amazing. They're all amazing. So I'm not going to keep on saying that. If you're into the hidden language of nature, this is definitely the book for you. It's about a deaf girl and her grandmother. The grandmother is the narrator. And the only way the, the granddaughter and the grandmother, that's how they refer to in the book, communicate with each other is through nature. So silent languages. It's clever. It'll tug those heartstrings, maybe even get a tear out of you. The offing, the offing. Oh, about the, the boy who befriends a lady in the middle of the countryside. Nature. I think nature is going to be quite a theme in this book, in this list. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It is actually. Anyway. Oh, it's, it's, it's so unpretentious, but so well written. The characters are realistic, and there's a lot of love in this book. Oh, I couldn't put it down. That's my washing machine, by the way t-shirt too okay cold new climate this is the first book of the new imprint weather glass books it's about let's say an illicit love affair but it's very interesting it's not cliched especially the ending the ending will either put you off the book or make you really like it and i like it i like when an author does that it's I won't give it away, and uh, it wouldn't be right for me to give it away. This is the kind of book that you should not really describe to people, because you'll spoil, uh, you, you, it's better if you're surprised. So that's all I'll say. It's about an illicit love affair. And that's a kind of half-truth there, but that's the best way I can describe it. Boy part. Yes. This is the one which will, well, shock, it's disturbing. It's a, it's a, what do I call it, a satire? Sort of satire on the female gaze and about exploitation, especially in the arts. This will never leave your mind. Now, this ticks off a lot of things for me. Uh, I really like um, clashing narratives that all get tied up through little coincidences. And the sound mirror is all about that. So it's about three different women. And they're all connected to each other. Three different generations. And it's about how, about the problems that women suffer in our society. They're different writing styles. It's, but it, it just, oh, I couldn't put it down. I loved it. That's a cliche. I know. But still. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is the book that got me back into reading Maltese literature, so it's very significant. This is a plot-based book. I don't know why I repeat that every time, but I still do. It's about a boy who discovers a strange character in a photo, and he decides to investigate the whereabouts of this, this uh, sorry, this girl, sorry, the whereabouts of this girl. And, it, it, you know, it, it, then he uncovers history, the history of his family, history of other countries. And then there's a narrator that's beyond the grave, and I, I really enjoy that sort of thing. That's that's giving an original touch. I was really impressed. So that's Fetishni by Antoinette Borch. Absorbed by Kylie Whitehead. This is, the again, from a new press. It's the collaboration between Influx and Dead Ink, two presses I really enjoy. And they're going to, set, you know, kind of create transgressive fiction. This is their first offering, and it is absolutely brilliant read. It's about a girl who absorbs her boyfriend after a 
particularly rough night, if you know what I mean. And it's about, again, uh, relationships, dominant relationships. Um, it talks about um, uh, gender roles. It's, it's quite a pr powerful statement. And again, it's well written. These are all well, well written. So this was my first, um, you know, big read of the year. The one that I really liked. The one that said, wow, oh my God. Yeah, this one knocked me. This is The Strongest Dinner by Peter Benson. It's about a carpenter who has to go out in the country and fix a house. But it turns out to be a love story as well. And it's told in a very unique way. It's really simple. You you will read this in a couple of, you know, not in one sitting, maybe in a couple of days you finish it. It's a very breezy book, but there's a lot going on. And I like books like that too. Highly recommended. They're all highly recommended. It's the Strongest Dinner. Okay. One of my favorite authors. Yeah, and that cemented it. It's Panenka by Ronan Hessen. If I'm pronouncing his surname properly. Yes. Um... It's about trauma. It's about a man who has gone through a traumatic experience and he doesn't know how to deal with it. And all the characters in this book all go through a traumatic, exper a traumatic experience of sorts. And it talks about their way of coping with it. It's a powerful book. Uh, it doesn't tell you how to live, you know, how to overcome a trauma, but it does give you some hints. It's not a guide. That's definitely not. I don't think literature should be a guide on how to do things. But it should sow some, plant some seeds in there. And did definitely with me. And it's a touching story. And it's got great characters. I just can't wait for his third book. Yeah. Okay, this is my favorite book from this year's International Booker Shortlist. Even though out of the six books, four were terrific. This one didn't win, unfortunately, but the one that did all, at night, All Blood is Black, is fantastic. Like I said, it was a good sh uh, shortlist this year. But for me, this one stood out. Um, I, I have mixed reactions with the author W.G. Seabold, because what he does is sometimes he can be a bit too rambly. But this book made me appreciate him again. I sort of like what he does, but now... I do like what I do like Seabold. I've been putting it off for years, but I do like Seabold. This is kind of like Seabold Jr. So it's about how science and nature battle against each other. And it's through scientific, um, well, through famous scientists like Einstein, uh, the Schopenhauer in here. And it all connects. And then there's some random, you know, I'm not describing this very well because it's not a book that. You, I should describe you have to read it and then it goes into other aspects of history and it all ties in with the with the scientist one and then there's a bit of a fiction part at the end but it's mostly non-fiction it's very factual I won't say I haven't read anything like it but it is a unique book if you like Seabold especially Austerlitz even though that one he used rings of Saturn he quoted it in there do read this. You won't regret it. And the very last one of this top 11 is Piranesi. I'm going through the Women's Prize shortlist at the moment. And I still think this is the highlight. I don't think it will win though, but we'll get into that. I'm probably going to do individual videos on each book. Starting from tomorrow. Or the day after. You know me. Anyway. So this is about a, a boy who's kind of lost in this weird maze. I kind of think, when I think of this maze, I don't remember, I don't know if you've seen the program Art Attack. Sometimes what happens is the main character goes into this, this kind of void area where there's this talking head. And it reminds me, that's how I think of it. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, it's about this boy who finds himself in this alternative world. That's, it's kind of a disused temple, I guess. And he seeks advice from this person, kind of master. But then as he keeps on exploring and finding clues to his past life, he starts to understand that this alternative world isn't exactly what it seems. 
It's a very clever book. And that's a very superficial de description. It does go much deeper. I mean, you can see there's a sort of homage to Narnia, but you can see it about alternative realities. You can think about it as metaphysics. So for a tiny book, which I read in one sitting, I really got a lot out of this. There's some elements from, this is a little bit, uh, well, panned, trickster. You see, now that came to me now. It doesn't really have a role, just a tiny one, but it, it's just a statue. I would like to reread this. Yeah, definitely. I would like to reread this. I probably will. Maybe um, next year. Anyway. So, those are my top 11 books of the last six months. Did you read any of these? What's your opinion on them? Go ahead, comment below, like, and subscribe. I'm sort of waiting for 500 people so I can do a QA. and a But so far we're at 225. My, but I understand why I don't edit my videos. I talk a lot. I ramble. Some people like it, some people don't. You know? But anyway, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy to really, really, um, you know, beg people for views and so on. But I do want to do a sort of Q&A. I, I think it would be neat. So I'll have to wait till I go to hit the 500 mark. Okay, anyway, that's it for me. See you next time for my Women's Prize shortlist videos. Bye.